Welcome back to Weave Along with Eloise. I'm Eloise of Finching Field. By the way, this is actually the second time through because I tried using a GoPro and I can't figure out how to download the data onto my computer. So I'm going to be working on that. I'll figure that out later. Me and tech, man. We're, we're not good friends. In November of 2022, a new tablet weaving find was released to the world and it took the internet by storm. Several people made reproductions of this piece and I, of course, let it incubate in my brain for a little while. Of course, I, you know, I had, I had the virus and then there was Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so now I'm ready to do the thing and show you how I did it. With special thanks to tablet weaver, Marcelo Oliveira, who is probably the fastest tablet weaver I know. And he does beautiful work, but he came up with this pattern and he was kind enough to share it with the Facebook community. And I asked permission to do a video on it. And he kindly allowed me permission to show this to you. See, I'll post it on my Facebook page, I'll post it on my blog, and I'll post it on my Pinterest page, which is pinterest.com slash Eloise, and then just scroll down to the bottom, a board called Weave Along with Eloise, and it has all the patterns that I've done for all of my videos. I found an article, and it was written in Icelandic, which I put through the Google Translate, which is always an adventure, but I gleaned enough information from it to, I think, understand how this piece came about. There was a landslide outside of the village of Seydisfjörður in 2020, December of 2020. While they were trying to stabilize the hillside, they came across a bunch of these archeological finds. They found beads, they found a fragment of a silver ring, they found pearls with gold foil on them, and they found this fragment of textile, which they believe came from a smocker, like this one. Of course, mine is not decorated, but we're gonna take care of that. The fabric was a 2-2 twill, um, dyed blue, like this one, and it had a piece of the tablet weaving and the loop for putting your brooch on. They believe that it came from a settlement dating from about 850 to 1100. Uh, the finds didn't date to anything earlier than that or anything later than that. Uh, the tablet weaving was wool. It had red dye in it and was about two centimeters wide. I don't know if the piece that I'm going to weave today is going to end up being two centimeters wide. I suspect it's going to be a bit narrower than that. We're just going to play with it and see what happens because the material that I decided to work with is new to me and the material is wool. It's actually a wool silk blend. It's a Jaeger spun and it's rather fine. I believe it's an 18 over two and it's super soft. So I suspect this is going to be a dream to work with and I can't wait to get started. I'm going to use these three colors. Um, which is, I think, very similar to what was already in the original band. Uh, let's see. So I, I think I'm ready to dive right into this one. You're going to need 12 cards. So grab your loom, your cards, your yarn, and a cup of tea, and let's get started. I have my first color loaded up in the Lazy Kate on the floor. I have got 12 cards. Got my other two colors ready to go, and I've got my pattern. Ta-da! I've got the threading diagram here and the whole pattern. Threading diagram here and a whole pattern. Well, if you use both of them, if you switch back and forth between this pattern and this pattern, it makes it twist neutral. I'm, I'm using the um, 3D printed cards. I've got white ones for the border and then black ones. These ones are really cool. My husband did these. Um, he did a, a layer of black and then he did a, a couple layers of white. And then he did another layer of black to create this relief. It is so amazing. He's genius. I tell you, I'm married up. So first color, yellow. So leave a long tail, like I always tell you, about four inches or so. Pinch it against that front peg, up and over. And I'm using the Becca loom. I'm really kind of liking this Becca loom. It gives me a lot of yardage. It's lightweight and it's real sturdy. Yeah, the, it's, it's a little loud in the Lazy Kate today because it's a different kind of spool. But uh, maybe I can talk over it. Or we'll just deal with it. Now, one of the things I didn't mention before is this is a skip hole pattern. The border cards, numbers 1 and 2, and number 11 and 12, are four threads per card. 
but uh, the rest of them are two threads per card. So this warping will go pretty fast for the middle cards. And you will need to employ the pencil. Those of you who've been watching me for a long time know what I mean. Those of you who haven't been watching for a long time, the pencil is used to put into the holes of the card while you're weaving to prevent the cards from spinning freely and kind of settling in a, an awkward position while you weave. So, four threads for the first card. And again, these are all labeled clockwise. You can only see the A, but it's A, B, C, D. And you want to turn the cards toward you. And a Z threading will go through the right side of the card or the front of the card. So we'll lay the threads on the top of the card and carefully pull the yarns through to the back. These are very lightweight threads. I have no idea how wide this piece is going to end up. I have a suspicion that it's going to end up pretty fine and narrow, which would be great. It won't be like the, the extant piece, but I think it's still going to look amazing. I think. I know it's going to look amazing. It's going to look fabulous. All right, scoot all those threads back. There is still a rough couple of spots on these dowels that I need to smooth out. I just need to take some sandpaper to it. Maybe wax it. All right, that's card number one. For card number two, blue. And I think I'm going to try this. See if this works. I'm just going to stand it up on the floor. Let's see if I can just pull from the top because it is a cone. Again, Leave a nice long tail, follow the same path. Uh, it fell over. That didn't work. I need to build one of those, um, those thread cone holders for tablet weaving. I've seen a few designs. I'll put a picture right here so you can see what I'm talking about. I need to build one of those. Lazy Kate adjusted. The blue is now in the Lazy Kate and the yellow was removed. So now it's going to make a lot of noise again. Did I tell you I taught a class in the Barony of Wywood not too long ago? We had a great time. There were about seven or eight people there, and uh, they came in, and we did some tablet weaving together, and a couple of them were brand new to the art, so that was a lot of fun. Getting to share this art with, uh, with some people. Some new weavers. That was pretty exciting. Okay, second card. Again, turn the card toward you. This one is S-threaded. goes through the back of the card. So I push the threads up to the back and pull the threads through the holes. And because, you know, of course, these are all one color, you don't have to worry about which thread goes into which hole. And I did get a question once about um, whether the, the threads will get twisted around each other, and generally they don't, but that one's kind of twisted, so I'm going to pull that out. It doesn't matter which thread goes into which hole, and if they twist a little bit in the middle, because that won't become, that won't be a problem for the most part. All right. Oh, I didn't tell you. Left over right twice, right over left once. That's called a surgeon's knot, and it is a nice secure knot, and your knot won't pull apart. Card number three is yellow and red. Both of them are on the Lazy Kate now. 
so we can thread them together at the same time. Saves time, again, nice long tail, pinch it against that front peg, putting your finger between the two of them so they don't twist around each other, and you follow the same path around all the pegs back to the beginning. Card number three is Z-threaded, so we're going to go through the front of the card again. Cardigan. A is red and C is yellow. So this is important. you got to put the threads into the right holes. So A is red and C is yellow. Now if you wanted to do the continuous weaving, you could thread all of your cards the same and then you carefully turn them into the right positions before you start weaving. That's advanced tablet weaving. So I, I, did, a, I did a video on continuous warping. Um, I think it was the one with the alphabet, right? I did the E is for Eloise. Um, so you can look back in the uh, playlist and you can find that one if you want to learn how to do continuous warping. It is a bit more challenging. You have been warned. Okay, so I'm going to line up. See, this is what I mean by that card flipping into position. It won't stay square like the other cards. It will turn. So you need to get the pencil for that. Okay, so for the next seven cards, it's the same thing. Card number four, B is red and D is yellow. Again, through the front. And following the pattern, you uh, thread the cards the rest of the way. Best laid plans. Okay, so I was going through all the footage that I recorded earlier today, and a lot of it is really poor quality. It was really noisy. The bird was going crazy. Uh, my husband was in a work meeting, so you could overhear some of the, the call. So I'm going to start this pattern at pick number one, just as if none of this existed. So we'll just, just ignore that, okay? So picks one through four are all turning forward. So we'll just turn all the cards forward. Use that pencil. I figured since this is an Icelandic pattern, I would use a pencil with snowflakes on it. It's Iceland snow. You get where I'm going? Okay. So one, two, three, four, just all the cards forward. Super easy. And then when AD are back at the top again, we are ready 
to go with pick five. I'm just going to double check, make sure that all the cards have AD at the top. I didn't think that was going to be a problem, but you never know. Okay, so for the next six picks, they're all backwards except for the border cards. So we're going to move those border cards forward. And we're going to turn the inner cards backwards and the border cards forwards. And repeat this six times. This makes it a fairly easy pattern. If you've been looking for uh, a step up from the really easy patterns to a slightly more complex pattern, this one actually does qualify. It's it's it has a few you know changes of directions, but it's not overwhelming. So this is the third pick backwards. Fourth, and you can kind of hear that the the yarn is a little bit sticky, but it's not too bad. Wool has a tendency to do that. Pick five and pick six. All right. Oh, it's looking so pretty. One, two, three, four, five, six picks forward. We're going to have all the cards go forward. You can hear that yarn kind of sticking to each other as it turns. So you do have to treat it a little bit gently. You don't want to wear the the yarn out by sliding the cards back and forth because that'll abrade the yarn. And I'm already having some issues with some of these cards have some rough edges on it and it's causing some abrasion on the yarn. So I'm having to turn it lightly. I don't want to I don't want to be rough on the cards or, or not or I don't want to be rough on the yarn. Where am I at? What was that? I think I have, oh yeah, two more, two more turns. One and two. All right, so that was pick 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, another six turns backwards. So just like we did before. Border cards ahead, black cards back. Let's see, any Two more turns. Okay, so pick twenty three through 30, all the cards are going forwards. Eight turns forwards.
Okay, so one, two, three, four, backwards. Because we only have a small fragment of this piece, it makes me wonder how much of these patterns are pre-planned and how much are completely random. Uh, they just uh, put the threads into the cards and turned them and turned them this way and that way and created patterns randomly instead of planning them out or having repeating patterns. Maybe because we don't have complete pieces we don't really know. Even some of the Birka ones, uh, that all we have is the, the metal left, there's quite often not repeating patterns. I find that fascinating. Okay, this is where the pattern starts to get complex. I pick 35. So 35 or 36 go forward, and then we're going to have to do split deck. So let's do these two picks forward. I think I snagged a thread. I do that sometimes with the pencil. I get the thread wrapped around the pencil so it doesn't turn properly. Okay, so pick 37. We're going to have the first four cards turning forward, two turning backward, and the rest forward. And repeat. And then basically the reverse. So the two cards backwards, two cards forward, four cards backwards. And repeat. And repeat two more times. It is nearly spring. And I've already planted a few seedlings. No. I've already planted a few seeds, and I have some seedlings. Um, I've got to wait a few more weeks for the ground to warm up enough to transplant them outside. And I had to get some chicken wire to keep the bunnies out. We've got some little brown bunnies that like to nibble on the young shoots. Okay, next two picks are forward all. So I've got some lettuce and spinach. Walla Walla onions, a whole bunch of marigolds because I was thinking about doing a marigold dye project later on. And uh, what else? Some summer squash and uh, parsley, I think. Italian parsley. Okay, for this pick we need to do six forward and then two back and four forward. Now last year I had a bunch of little seedlings that I took outside and uh, very little of it survived. The little bunnies nibbled everything down to the ground. I think out of all the garlic that I planted out there and all the onions, I ended up with three onions and I planted at least 50. And I had four or five cloves of garlic and that was all that was left. Everything else was gone. So I'm going to try again, and this time with some uh, chicken wire around it to keep the bunnies out. Hopefully that works. Okay, so pick 47. Got four back, two forward, and two back. Oh, and the border cards. I'm not counting the border cards. So you may decide that you want to have a whole bunch of border cards and make this much, much wider than I've got. 
and that is totally up to you. Artist prerogative. And repeat. I know some of you are in the southern hemisphere and some of you are in the northern hemisphere, so if your summer is just coming to a close, what did you plant this year? And oops, your spring is just around the corner, what are you going to plant this year? Or do you use pots? Do you have uh, planting in pots? I have a few on my deck. I have some uh, thyme and some Italian parsley on my deck. Bunnies are less apt to get at it. And it makes it easier for collecting for dinner, you know. I just need a little snip at a time, run out onto the deck. All right, two picks forward. Two more picks forward. What I would love to try planting is woad but uh, I don't think it's allowed here. I think it's considered invasive, and so you're not allowed to do it. Which is weird because we've got two other invasive species that are growing all over the hillsides. We've got Himalayan blackberries and um, scotch broom, and both of those grow absolutely uncontrollably. Okay, so the next six, seven, eight picks, I think that's what it looks like, are all backwards. I would have loved to plant matter and woad and um, here's the other thing. Flax would be fun to try. But of course I've got a very tiny parcel of land so I have to be very choosy about what I put back there. I just don't have the space for too many hobbies. I don't have the time for too many hobbies either. I mean, I've got so many. Okay. Four more picks. I need to do, I guess it's two more picks until that yellow comes to a point at the top. Now there's some people who can weave just by looking at the pattern on the that they're producing and figure out which cards to turn. And my brain does not do that. Usually. I mean, for this, sure. Okay, I need to do two more picks to get the yellow to come to a point. But, yeah, knowing which cards to turn to create a, a really elaborate pattern, I have not reached that point. Okay, and the last two picks are forward. And then we are at the end of this repeat. I went really fast, didn't I? It's crazy. Oop, wrapped around the string again. And there we have one full repeat of the pattern. stuck. Okay.